Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about Synology High Availability. I've already done a video where I've shown you guys exactly how to set up an SHA between a couple of desktop NASes, in this case the DS920. And today I'm going to do a few uh, failure tests. I've got the two devices, I've got our Synology cluster that we created before and we're going to be doing three separate tests. First we're going to show what happens when the passive server disappears from the local area network then we're going to do another test where the active server disappears from the local area network and then finally we're going to do a iSCSI and mapped network drive file transmission a large pile of data we're going to begin an enormous dump of data over the local area network onto these drives and then we're going to kill the active server and in these three tests we're going to find out what happens when you lose a passive what happens when you lose an active and what happens to ongoing transmissions in the event of this happening now as a prediction I'm willing to bet that in the event of an active uh, failure during file transmission some of those transfers are either going to error out or gutter down to zero megabytes per second for an indefinite period on the bottom you can see there some tests we've done earlier on to prepare for this test but ultimately i think we're going to have to go extreme during this video and rather than pull from the network cable i am just going to pull the power cable out of these NASes. now bear in mind i do not recommend you do this this is not something anyone should do it can severely damage your data it can definitely damage the hard drives inside and when i'm conducting these tests know that i'm doing this to save you the trouble of doing the same as mentioned, we are using an iSCSI target in the later stage of this video, and we have set up uh, set up a shared drive, a shared folder, which has been used as a mapped network drive. So, without further ado, why don't we get started with the first stage of testing? As you can see from the recording on screen, I've labelled quite uh, quite not um, amateurly which one of these two NASs is the active and the passive. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it now and remove the power from our passive server to see what the Synology High Availability Cluster does. So let's pull that first one. So straight away we've pulled power from the passive server. So in theory that means that everything we're doing and all the files and folders that we interact with, nothing should disappear. It should all be perfectly visible on the network. If we remove that from the bottom of the screen, it still hasn't noticed that the passive server has disappeared from the local area network. I'll give that a little bit longer. We can have layer at the alerts at the top. As we can see, it's just noticed there is a problem. It's sent it's noticed an abnormality, and now the passive server has been registered as not available. As you see there, it says make sure that it's powered on and all network connections are properly made. So it has noticed that this has been a sudden termination of access there. And of course, unsurprisingly, if we make our way back into there and we'll dump some media files there, all those great mischief movie nights that we used in the previous videos, it's click copy. And as you can see, this won't affect how and where we interact with it. If we go with the iSCSI target, we can dump that in there. We are using um, a local area network there. So again, it's going to transfer over nice and easily. Bear in mind, of course, that we are utilizing standard network protocol there. So that initial speed is mainly the NVMe in this laptop, suddenly realizing that we are using Wi-Fi there. And the same goes, if we want to go back, we can see that the shared folder is still accessible as well. So we dump some files in there. That should be absolutely fine. Obviously, that will halve the network being used by both of these. But that does mean those we see those files are all going in there lovely and easily, nice and straightforward. So let's come out of there. Let's go there, go back. And what we'll do is we'll cancel both of those operations. And now we're going to go ahead and reactivate our passive server. So let's put the power back in. The system is now rebooting. Let's, it should take a few minutes there. So what I'm going to do is fast forward what you can see here on screen. And we'll see what happens with the passive server. Uh, normally a Synology like this would take maybe two to three minutes to initialize. So what we're going to do is fast forward now uh, to the initialization of that NAS and see its effect on the Synology high availability GUI there on screen. So 
So the NAS has initialized, the Synology has done the beat that we normally associate with the NAS booting up and now we can see there on screen that the DS922 passive server is now ready and it's re-establishing that connection there and it's synchronizing between the two devices due to the fact that we have transmitted some new data onto the Synology NAS and right now it's synchronizing via the heartbeat there the transfer speed, uh, the transfer of data between these two devices. But as we can see, that is now synchronizing there in the background. So once that's done, which shouldn't take too much longer, we're now going to show what happens when an active server fails. We can see that the high availability cluster has now completed. So for now, we're going to kill the active server. That's the server on the left-hand side of the screen. So what I'm gonna do now is kill this server and allow you guys to see on screen what happens. So let's go ahead and pull that drive, uh, pull the PSU out of this NAS now. Now this is where things may get quite interesting because we are still accessing this um, 120 IP NAS here, but the transition still needs to take place. We can see that we've lost total connection with it because the control panel isn't loading and all of this is stuff that's built into the browser. Equally, right now, we're going to see that although it's reporting as healthy, our connection with the primary NAS isn't healthy anymore. And if we go, for example, into the information center, it now kicks us out to say that this NAS is now no longer available. However, the other NAS, you may have just heard that, just beeps there in the background. And that means that the switch over between them may well have completed. And from what I can see on screen, it now has. So if we go back into this NAS now, log into the device, go into the high availability, and as you can see now, the first NAS has now deactivated the one we disconnected, and the secondary NAS has now become the primary, the active server. And as we can see, the auto failover happened there in the background to carry everything over as easily and as suitably as possible. And again, if we go into the PC here, we can see that both the mapped network drive and that uh, iSCSI target is already and available on screen right there. So once again, we're going to go ahead and reconnect the primary NAS there to show what happened. So let's go ahead and reconnect that. The more astute of you may have noticed that we don't have to press the power button on the front on either of the pull tests that we've done so far. The NAS will automatically trigger a startup boot as soon as power is attached in a Synology high availability environment. Basically, every second counts. The transfer there was still remarkably quick for an external active passive relationship, but now it's gonna be interesting to see if the active and passive roles on these two systems swap back to the way they were before, or have the new active passive relationship changeover going to become the status quo moving forward on this system. Let's fast forward to a few minutes to see when that first server there has finished its boot up sequence. So we've heard the beep there in the background and now we're going to see if that is going to change the relationship of these two devices here on the network, whether the active and the passive will revert to the way they were before or they will assume their new um, relationship and places here within the SHA environment. We're seeing those green LEDs flicker around like crazy on screen there and now we're seeing that the direction of the SHA has indeed changed. The primary NAS has now become the passive with the brand new active server keeping that new identity there on the network. So we're going to let that uh, process complete there in the background. It shouldn't take too much longer. And now our SHA has still got our one system redundancy ready and installed. And we'll move on to our third area of testing where we're going to be doing uh, a data dump on the active server and then we're going to pull the power on that active server there to show what happens. It's going to fast forward there and we're done. The healthy is all set up. The active server is now ready. 
the completion of that test there. So now let's move on to the third stage of testing. Once again, we're going to make our way into the PC. We're going to head in there. We're going to go ahead and go into WMVs. Huge pile of WMVs in there. Let's have a look. What is the data size there? 93 gig. That's more than enough to be contending with there. So let's come out of it there. And what we're going to do is we're going to dump all of that into both the iSCSI target and the mapped network drive. And for those of you who are wondering, we have enabled it that um, iSCSI targets are included in the high availability as well. So let's go ahead and begin that data dump there. And then we're going to pull the cable on the second uh, device the active module so let's go ahead and dump that in there let's go back and into the second one so there we go we've got both of those happening there in the background we're going to leave that test there on screen and then while that does that because i'm going to have to try and work out where exactly we've put the camera recording i'm going to click skip doesn't matter that's general light access file the network there did not want to play the game there of both devices on it but we're just going to stick with that one for now leave all that file being transferred over I'm going to let it get a little bit of grounding speed there and now i'm going to go ahead and pull that additional cable So there we go. This is going to be interesting to see which speeds we achieve because straight away we've seen there on screen the network speed there gutter balled down to 2.44 megabytes there um, as we pulled that cable. So it's going to be interesting to see if one, the process that we're operating right now will complete. We can see there at the moment it's saying that there is a network error and of course when the network error occurs, it's still going to sit there and stall and occasionally and periodically say to us, do we want to resume this action? But for now, we're going to see that transfer over from within the high availability uh, mode there. We can see that it's still trying to do it. Let that try again. The switch over has happened. And if we try again, it hasn't finished yet. It's still in the processing stages. That finish up there the active failover was certainly noticed and it has transferred it over but if we try again have a look there it's still not allowing us and now it has resumed that connection so a little over a minute there of transfer between them uh, how long it's taken for the Synology to hand over obviously an active active pass through such as found on the UC 3200 would be a great deal quicker than that but it's still nice to know that Although there is obviously going to be a delay when there's no access to either of the network targets, that our processes can still resume if we need them to. Now, there will be another test on the active-passive relationship of these NASs. We're going to be running some proprietary apps such as virtualization and surveillance station in the follow-up video, so do stay tuned for those. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, what we're going to do just to end this video is we're going to leave that on screen there, and then we're going to reconnect the secondary NAS there, that passive one, and then we're going to see what happens with our file transfer there. So let's reconnect that device. Much like before, we can see that the power has automatically connected. And so, as I say, we're going to let this finish up what it's doing. We're going to see what happens. Will it interrupt our transfer? Almost certainly. But it may well not to do that as it creates the synchronization via the heartbeat cable. The network may well still be free for us to continue our transfer of data onto this device. So let's fast forward to the completion of the boot up of that passive second server. And there is the beep of uh, the 920-2 model finishing its boot sequence. So let's see how Synology uh, and its SHA deals with that one during this file transmission. We've still not seen a dip from the 40 or 50 megs there while we communicate via the network onto the active server there. And in the background, almost certainly now, between these two devices, they are now synchronizing the content of both. And as we can see, 
the way the systems are uh, reacting to this, we're still getting that transfer speed all happening in real time with data being transmitted between both devices, peaking at 73 megabytes per second right now. So again, not fully maxing out the 100 megs, but it's worth remembering that to max out that 100 megs, we need to be utilizing a certain file type. But I would say that this only goes to prove that if you are interacting with the active server and the passive server goes down, then things do aren't noticeable to your end users. They won't see any interruption. However, the other way around, of course, if you are, uh, if you if you lose your active server, there's going to be a delay of around a minute to a minute and a bit, where the passive server has to assume its new responsibility as the active device in your SHA cluster. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And other than that, do visit the links in the description to NAS Compares to learn more about not just Synology NAS, but all things network attached storage. Apart from that, I will see you next time.